Hey guys, so brace yourself, another gear video is coming. However, seeing as it is towards the end of February, that for me means the start of the 2018 camping and hiking season. Definitely not a summer camper, so now that the temperatures are cooling down, it's time to hit the trails. And well, I thought since it's the beginning of the season for me, I would make a bit of a gear summary video for you guys and just show you what I'm starting the year off with and then maybe halfway through or towards the end of the year, I'll make another video and we can see how things have changed. So let's get started. Um, I'll try and keep this pretty short. I have made detailed gear review videos for some of, the, some of the bits of gear. So if you're interested, you'll find that down below in the description, um, as well as a link to my lighterpack.com uh, page, which will list the weights, etc. if you're curious about that. Hopefully that'll save some time because this will be long enough as it is. So for the second time, let's get started. So this is pretty much all the gear I carry with me. Um, this does not include any of the clothes I wear, the shoes, the pants, shirt, um, etc., etc. This is pretty much all the stuff that I carry inside my pack, including the change of clothes, wear, wear the gear, um, cold weather gear, etc. So. We shall go over it, over this, um, starting from the left, we'll go at the pack and then kind of make our way through. So, as you can see, my pack is the Exos 48 from Osprey. Now, spoiler alert for the next video, this will not be um, the pack that I see the year out through. I've actually got another pack on its way and I'll let that be a little bit of a surprise, but hopefully it'll get to me in about a month or so. Really, really excited. Um, it's a frameless pack. 38 liters, I think, or so, but I'll um, I'll leave that there. Regardless, the Exos, awesome pack. Um, love the suspension here and the gap that it gives you. Allows your back, back to breathe a little bit more. Uh, been an awesome pack. We'll keep it for two-person camping with the wife when I carry some of her stuff. But since my gear is getting a little bit lighter and lower volume, um, I'm finding I'm having a lot of room left in this pack, so time to move on to something else. With the trekking poles, I'm not a big fan of trekking poles. Um, these are Black Diamond Trail back. We'll let the camera focus on there, kind of, sort of, maybe. Um, there we go. As you can see, I've had these poles for a lot of years. Haven't bothered to upgrade or change them to something lighter, just because I don't really use trekking poles that much, but they are part of my shelter system, which we will get to. So I will probably use them on a majority of trips, so I'm gonna include them in this video. This is just strapping tape, which you see here. This is mainly just for grip and comfort. If I'm going up a hill, rather than adjusting a trekking pole, and the hill's not too big, I'll just grab below the handle, um, and this is just a bit more grippy, a bit more comfortable, etc. I do have duct tape on both poles, which I use to repair any kind of rips or tears or holes or anything in the gear. And um, I gotta say, that's that's been really, really helpful to have easy access to duct tape. So I definitely recommend uh, if you carry trekking poles to put some duct tape on there or find another place to pop some duct tape because you never know when it's gonna come in handy. Moving on to my water filtration. Pretty standard soy filter, uh, soy squeeze filter, not the mini. I don't think the flow rate's really that great on the mini. More than happy to um, carry a little bit extra weight and take up a little bit more room with the standard squeeze. Just the just a standard water bottle cap to protect the clean end a little bit. Um, I've got the connecting piece here, which connects to the way I carry my water, which I don't have in this video, but it's just your standard 1.5 liter Mount Franklin water bottle. It's not a fancy Nalgene or bladder of any sort or anything like that. Um, just a standard 1.5 liter water bottle. If I'm camping away from a water source, I'll carry two, uh, but generally just one. I still do use a standard soy squeeze bag there for the dirty water. It can be a massive pain in the backside to fill up. So I've got this, I don't know where I got it from, but anyway, if it's a very shallow stream or slow flowing, I can scoop the water in here and then pour it into the bag and that makes life a little bit easier. So really happy with that. Moving on to the cooking side of things. I've made a separate review on the Tox Titanium alcohol stove. Awesome little kit, very efficient. Um, it's like a little rocket, love it. Can't wait to use it uh, for this year. It's a relatively new piece of gear for me, so really excited to use that. Um, for the metho, I carry it in a 
250ml Mount Franklin bottle. I've got to write METHO all over this bottle just in case someone gets a little bit confused at camp and um, thinks this is water. That's going to get a little bit awkward or interesting, to say the least. What else do I have? Um, Optimus Spoon. So this unfolds like so. Uh, if you use dehydrated meals, you know, it allows you to scoop in there a little bit more. So that's cool. You can take it off if you want to save a few grams, but you know, it's not too heavy. It's a great little spoon. Uh, scrubber, little rag, lighter. I've got the pot stand for the tokes and the windshield as well. So that comes standard. And I use my MSR titanium pot, which I've used on gas stoves, I've used in the fire. Um, it's an awesome, awesome pot. So love that little cooking setup at the moment. Very lightweight. Everything fits inside the pot and just chuck it in a little bag and away we go. So nice and easy. Moving on to the sleep system, so this stuff here. Now, I do have a foam mat, the Thermarest z Light, which I use sometimes, but I'm thinking that the Cedar Summit Ultralight Insulated Mat in the regular size will be kind of my main go-to. So I've chosen to use it in this video right now, but um, definitely use the Thermarest z Light, and it's like the three-quarter length as well. So you might see that in some of my videos. Uh, Cedar Summit pillow just makes life a bit more comfortable. Doesn't take up much room, doesn't weigh too much, so I, um, I bring that along. And this is my quilt. The Revelation from Enlightened Equipment. It is the 20 degree Fahrenheit or the minus six or seven Celsius. This will be my first season using a quilt, so really excited to kind of use that. Played around with it at home. Really looking forward to using it out on the trail. Another first for me, or well, first in a long time. I've used tarps beforehand, but I'm going back to tarps for this season. This is the Z-Pax um, Cuban Fiber Tarp. Super duper lightweight, but very, very basic. Um, awesome little tarp, have played around with it uh, the last few days, setting it up, etc. And I'm pairing it up with an MLD Bug Bivy 2. So that's what's in here, as well as their ground sheet. Just that thin bit of plastic, pardon me, thin bit of plastic, um, you can see it's kind of two-toned. So the lighter part here is where the ground sheet is. Um, full review coming on that. I know there's not a lot of info on the internet, um, on YouTube, etc., about the Bug Bivy 2. So gonna make a big effort to do a really good video. Um, with a whole bunch of info, setting it up, breaking it down, etc. So stand by for that. That's the MLD Bug Bivy 2. Let's go down. Over here, we've got a pretty standard buff. Use it as a towel, use it to grab um, the pot, um, wipe sweat. I mean, just multi use standard buff. Nothing special. Wet weather gear. This is a poncho that I've picked up from Decathlon, so kind of just a local camping store. But uh, I've traditionally used a Marmont kind of Gore-Tex fancy jacket. Switching over to the poncho for a few reasons. Number one, it's got, hopefully you can see it um, on the little drawing here, these little clips, these buckles. So what that allows you to do is basically unclip both sides and it turns into a big rectangular ground sheet type setup. So after I test it properly, I'm hoping to replace the ground sheet that's going to go in the Bug BB2. And I can just use the poncho here as a ground sheet. Save a little bit of weight. Um, and Or I might keep it since the ground sheet there doesn't really weigh anything. And um, just have a backup or just another ground sheet. We'll see how we go. The other good thing about this is that it acts as a pack cover. Now traditionally you had to carry another pack cover because you know those kind of packs aren't waterproof. Uh, my new pack is a little bit more waterproof, but regardless, uh, this is quite big, so it's going to be able to fit over my shoulders and around the back of the pack. So I'll be able to wear my pack underneath the poncho, which is awesome. Keep the pack perfectly dry. Really happy about that. Moving on over, let's do navigation. Um, standard MC2 Global Compass from Sunto. It is a mirror compass. I've done a full review on this. The mirror for navigation is pretty much overkill. You only really need a base plate compass. But for a few extra grams, I've got a multi-use piece of gear. I've got a signaling mirror in there, signaling mirror there. And also, if you need to make longer kind of lines on the map, because the mirror extends, it makes life a little bit easier that way. So, yeah, you know, it's just a compass, works really well. Um, do you need the mirror? No, but I thought for an extra couple of bucks, 
extra couple of grams. I've got my signaling mirror sorted with the compass. This is my favorite piece of first aid gear. Can't recommend it enough, a PLB. This is the ACR with the floaty back since I do a fair bit of kayaking. Worth its weight in gold, whether you do solo, um, two, three people, can't, I don't know, it doesn't matter. If you go out camping away um, from main trails, etc., take one of these. Um, it brings the cavalry in once you activate it and really like, Again, worth its weight in gold, get a PLB, can't recommend it enough if you guys are serious about hiking, camping, expensive. But um, in the long run, if you have a serious injury, um, you're gonna, you're really gonna <laughs> regret not having one of these if you don't have it with you. So, can't say enough good things about a PLB. This is my first aid kit, pretty minimalist, um, because again, I've got this. If there's really nothing that I can't sort out in the field, with this, then it's probably gonna be time to pull this thing. Um, broken legs, uh, bad snake bites, you know, really serious bleeding, etc. I'll be able to manage that and stay in place, pull this and get help to come to me. So that's the kind of plan. The first aid kit is pretty much made up of things that I've used over the years. So I've got a um, pretty standard uh, bandage here, crepe bandage there, some antiseptic, band-aids, blister tape, some clothes pins, um, some painkillers, anti-inflammatories, etc. Basic, but it's more than enough for me. Um, custom first aid kit all the way. Definitely recommend it. Sunscreen, sunscreen, um, scream, screen. Um, there, nothing too special. Toiletries bag, my poop shovel is getting replaced with a deuce of spades, hopefully shortly, something much, much lighter. Apart from that, I've got the toothbrush with the cover, some toilet paper, toothpaste, um, nothing too special. Petzl E-Lite 50 Lumens, new bit of kit for me, done a full review on that. Should be more than enough. Traditionally used a Black Diamond Storm with, you know, the 200, 250, 300, whatever lumens it is up to these days. So, really interested to see how the 50 Lumens E-Lite will do. Um, from the testing I've done so far, I think it'll be more than enough and it's so small and light, really awesome. I keep my toiletries, sunscreen, actually sunscreen I'll keep on me, but first aid kit and stuff in this little bag which stays on the outside of my pack in the um, meshy section. Um, but I also have some spare cord here um, in case I get fancy with the tarp, do some kind of different setups. Another lighter, I usually carry at least two or three lighters. The best backup for a lighter is another lighter. Um, earplugs, those of you that have camped in windy conditions know all about having earplugs. Really can get really difficult to sleep without them. Pretty standard Swiss Army knife, nothing too special. I uh, have used big hunting knives, Leathermans, you name it, I've probably used it. Um, and I've kind of settled on this Swiss Army knife. It's got pliers, it's got scissors, um, a whole bunch of little things. Not the smallest or lightest thing in the world, but I definitely get a whole bunch of use out of it, so um, that's staying. Moving on to the clothes in my pack. So this is more my cold weather gear. Um, Patagonia, I forget the name, I'll flash it up on the screen, but just a simple lightweight down jacket serves me well. I have spare socks to sleep in. Um, these are them, just standard kind of icebreaker merino wool socks. Possum gloves, um, these do about 99% of the time. I don't really need anything thicker or warmer or waterproof or anything like that. They're awesome. Icebreaker merino wool beanie, um, followed by some thermal icebreaker um, pants or leggings, whatever you want to call them. And then if it is going to be quite cold, dip into the minuses. I've got an icebreaker top as well, merino wool. So um, that's there as well, an optional extra, but I thought I'd include it in the video. And well guys, that's pretty much it. If you have any further questions or anything about any of the gear that you see here, um, I try not to take too long to go into too much detail, but if you have any specific questions for it, leave them down below. If you wanna see any reviews on any specific gear, let me know, I'll create the video if it's not already up. Remember to check the comments down below or the description down below for any existing reviews. So as always, thank you so much for watching. Hope you got something out of it. Um, and until next time, happy trails.